Hey everyone, this is Dan from Shaner Designs. In this advanced tutorial, I'll be showing you how to use step files in flexible assemblies. So to start out, we'll be using this pneumatic ripper from Automation Direct, and we'll be importing that as a step file and um, creating an assembly within SolidWorks. So let's scroll down here, go ahead and download the step file, get that started. Once it's downloaded, we'll go ahead and open it. And then it's going to ask us what assembly um, template we want to use. So we'll just go with our default. So use Control Tab to go over to the next tab, which is where that um, step file imported to. So now you can see we have a part with three bodies. So what we're going to do is go to the Configuration tab, right click Add Configuration, do body only. Obviously you can name this whatever you want, but this is the way I like to do it. Um, just like to start with basically the biggest component first, which is the body in this case. Uh, so now I'm going to use the delete key body command. And I'll get rid of everything else. And then we'll go back here. Go back to our default configuration. Add a new configuration. And call it finger. You can see the fingers are symmetric here. It's the same on each side. So we really only have one part there, so we're just going to use it twice. Um, that might not always be the case. Some of these grippers have a right and a left hand side, so you'll need to watch out for that. In this case, we're just going to do the same thing. Now, if you don't have this feature here, you can always search for it. Go here for command and start typing. See, delete key body is there. So now I'm going to delete everything except for one of those fingers. So now that we have our three configurations, uh, we've got default, body, and finger. We can go ahead and save that. Okay, so now the next thing I'm going to do is create a new assembly. And then I'm going to bring that part in that I just saved. So now I'm going to change this configuration to the body only. And then I'm going to copy and paste. Make this into a finger. And then grab these two planes, made them. And then grab this bottom face here. And mate with that face. Now I'm going to use a command called copy with mates. So if I right click on the part, do copy with mates, you can see it's selected a part. So now I'll go into the next arrow. I'm going to use this plane again, but remember that part's flipped around. So I'm going to flip the alignment. And then I'm going to just repeat this one. Okay, so there we go. We've got um, both these parts in there. So the next thing I'm going to do is change this back to default. And then I'm going to measure this distance real quick. 10.2 millimeters, which makes sense. That would be the open position. Um, the stroke on this gripper is 10 millimeters. So I'm assuming that 10.2 millimeters is all the way open. And then when it's all the way closed, these two faces are touching. So now that we have that information, we can change this back. And then we're going to find um, this top plane here. Do a new mate. Go to advanced mates, symmetric. We want to make it, uh, we want to make these two faces symmetric about that plane. Now while we're in here, we'll do the limit distance mate between these two faces. The minimum distance is going to be 0. The maximum is 10.2 millimeters. And we'll click OK. To get it to update, you'll have to click and drag. But now you can see when we move them, they both move. 
and uh, they've got the limits that we set up. So now that we have this, let's go ahead and save it. I'm going to call this um, KP20MD-M. So now I'm going to go into this other assembly that I've already created. I'll do insert component existing part or assembly. So you can see we've got the part and the assembly. Right now we want to work with the assembly. So I'll drag that in here. And then I'm just going to create some mates real quick. Oh, that wasn't right. I'm going to flip the alignment there. And then the same thing here. And then these should be touching. Okay, so this is probably a common application. Uh, you're mounting the gripper to some other component. In this case, a uh, another pneumatic actuator. So now you can see, if we try to move these, everything is fixed. So what I'm going to do is come into uh, to our assembly and make subassembly flex flexible. So now when I move them, that's great. The only problem with this, that's pretty heavy on performance. So if you're trying to optimize performance in your assembly, that's going to slow things down. So what I'm going to do is go back here, add a new configuration, and call it open. Now I'll go into the mate group, suppress this mate, select the two faces again, and do a distance mate. 10.2 millimeters. And then same thing. Add a closed configuration. Suppress that mate. Go back here and make some touch. So now we have a flexible configuration a closed configuration, and an open configuration. Going back to our assembly, if I just want to be able to show how this thing moves, and maybe put some grippers on there and show it gripping apart, I just have to go in here and select the closed configuration. And then that way I can leave this uh, subassembly rigid. And then when I go back to the default configuration, you can see those aren't going to move. But then I still have the closed and the open configurations. So another way to do this, instead of inserting a subassembly here, I'm going to recreate that subassembly within my main assembly. So I'll go ahead and start doing that now, and I'm going to speed up the video for a minute. Okay, so here we go. We can see now we basically have two different ways of doing the same thing. So the first method is to create this subassembly, save it, and then import it into our, our main assembly. And uh, like I said, this can be performance heavy. Um, this other way of doing it is bringing each of those parts in individually into your main assembly. This can be kind of clunky. Uh, you end up with a lot of parts in your main assembly tree. It's a little bit harder to keep track of everything and what goes with, um, you know, what parts are grouped together. Um, but the reason for doing this is if you have a mate controller and you want to be able to animate your full assembly moving, 
if you use this method, that's going to be really hard to do. But if you use this method, um, everything is going to be within the assembly, and you're going to be able to add those, um, add these constraints to your mate controller and do some animation that way. So as usual, there's more than one way to do things in SolidWorks. But hopefully having these two different methods, two different approaches, and understanding the reasoning behind each, um, hopefully that gives you options in your designs going forward, and then you can make that decision for yourself. So that's all I have for this video. Hopefully you got something useful out of it. And uh, as always, please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.